Okay, in this lecture, we're going to take those relationships that you learned and we're going to put them, apply them to some math problems. Okay? Um, if you understand the relationships, the math problems really aren't that hard. You just have to learn a new way of doing them. And that's what this lecture is going to be all about. Okay? So let's review a couple of things real quick. First of all, pressure and volume are inversely related. That means if one goes up, the other one goes down. They're going in opposite directions, right? If you increase the volume, the pressure will drop because you're giving it more room to move, more collisions. Pressure and temperature are directly related. That means if one goes up, the other goes up. So either you're raising the temperature and you're increasing the number of collisions, or you're lowering the temperature and decreasing the number of collisions and the pressure goes down. Volume and temperature are directly related. So one goes up, the other one goes up, and also volume and number of particles are directly related. Remember, now we're going to be talking about moles instead of counting particles, but a mole is just a number of particles, a large number. Okay? The other thing you want to remember about this is that when you compare any two of these gas variables, the other variables will stay constant. And as far as the tables go, that's really important, okay? because it makes things much simpler. So this is what an IFE table looks like. Okay, it's a table across the top. We have the four variables, P, V, A, T, and N, pressure, volume, temperature, and number of particles, or moles. Down the side, we have IFE. So what does IFE stand for? Well, I stands for initial. This is the starting value for a particular variable. F stands for final. That's what it changes to. And E stands for the effect. What happens to that variable? Is it going up or is it going down? Now that means that in the I and F rows, you're going to actually have numbers with units, like liters or atmospheres for pressure. Okay? But in the E row, you're going to only have an arrow. The arrow is either going to be pointing up or pointing down, depending on what that variable is doing. Okay? So filling out these tables is very, very easy. Now, what about things that are constant? So let's take a look in an, as an example. So we have 25 liters of carbon dioxide gas. Temperature of that gas is 25 degrees Celsius. We're going to heat it until its temperature goes up to 55 degrees Celsius. And I want to calculate the new volume of the gas at, this, at the new temperature of 55. Okay, so there's three numbers in there. Like, what do we do with those numbers? Well, we're going to use the table to make the problem super easy. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the table. So I want you to draw this in your notebook or in your notes. Go ahead and pause the video and draw this, set this up. Okay, so in the previous question, in the question that we're answering here, it didn't say anything about pressure. So we're going to keep that constant. I'm just going to cross that whole column out because I'm not going to use it. And it didn't say anything about number of particles. So I'm going to cross that column out. I'm not going to use it. See, we're already making the table simpler just by getting rid of the things that are constant. If they're constant, they're not changing. We don't care about them. Okay? We just have to make sure they're constant. Now, what volume did it give us? It said we had 25 liters of gas. And it said the temperature was 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, we've got to pause here. Okay? We have to pause here. Because temperature, when we're talking about gases, remember that temperature is kinetic energy. And in the SI system, the standard unit for temperature is Kelvin, okay? not degrees Celsius. See, it's important that temperature never has a value of zero because it's kinetic energy. And everything has kinetic energy. There's never a situation when you don't have kinetic energy. That's called absolute zero. So we have to make sure that, that temperature is never zero. But we can have a gas at zero degrees Celsius. That exists. I mean, it gets colder than that in the winter in Wisconsin. So we have to make sure that we can never have a value of zero. And the only way to do that is to convert our temperatures into Kelvins because we'll never have zero Kelvins. Gases, nothing exists at zero Kelvin as far as we know. So the way you convert your temperatures into Kelvin is you just add the number 273. That's it. If you were paying attention when you did the simulation, you kind of already know that. All right, so that means we have to, we can't put 25 degrees as our initial temperature. We have to add 273 to that, and 273 plus 25 is 298. And the unit is just K, not degrees, just K. Okay? Now, 
What else do we know? Well, we know that we don't know what the new volume is going to be because we're going to calculate that. So that's our unknown. And we know that our new temperature is 55 Celsius, but we can't put 55 Celsius down. We have to add 273 to that, and that gives us 328 Kelvins. Okay? So let's fill in the E column now. What is the temperature doing? The temperature from I to F is increasing. So I'm going to draw a little up arrow. According to the relationship between volume and temperature that we just talked about at the beginning of this lecture and in previous lectures, volume and temperature are directly related. That means when one goes up, the other goes up. So if I increase the temperature, what should the volume do? It should also increase. Now the reason I want to put those arrows in there is because that's going to help me set my problem up. Okay? I'm going to start with the thing that I know that's related to the thing that I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to start with 25 liters. And now I'm going to multiply that 25 liters by a ratio. I'm going to use the, the two numbers of temperature as a ratio. I want my 25 liters to get bigger because that's what it says in the E column. So the way I'm going to make my ratio is I'm going to put the larger number on top because larger over smaller will make 25 liters bigger. So I put 328 over 298 because I want 25 to get bigger. And if I do the math, it comes out to 27.5 liters. That's it. That's as easy as it gets. Okay? Let's do another example. I have 5.0 liters of helium gas. The pressure is 1.0 atmospheres. I put it in a large syringe. All right, 5.0 liters, that would be a ginormous syringe. But still, this is a problem. Let's just stick with it. We pull the plunger out until the volume goes up to 8.5 liters. What's the pressure going to change to? Okay? So, set up our table. We know that we're not going to be talking about temperature. It doesn't mention anything about temperature, and it doesn't mention anything about particles. So let's fill in our I table for pressure and volume. It tells me that I have five liters and that the pressure is one atmosphere. Okay. It tells me that I'm changing the volume to 8.5 liters, and I want to know what does the pressure change to. So I don't know what the new pressure is, the final pressure. What did the volume do? The volume increased. What's the pressure going to do? Well, I know that that's an inverse relationship between pressure and volume. So if the volume goes up, the pressure has to go down. And so I'm going to start with the one atmosphere, because that's in the column with the thing I don't know. I'm going to multiply that by the ratio. Now, this time I want 1.0 to go down. So I have to put the smaller number on top. And if I multiply 1.0 times 5.0 liters over 8.5 liters, I get 0.59 atmospheres, which is lower, which is what it should be. Okay? Pretty straightforward. All right, you try this one. I want you to pause the video, draw an IFE table, try this example. I'm not going to show you how it's done in this lecture, but we'll talk about it in class, okay? So write it down in your notes and try it.